Welcome. Um, I wanted to share, excuse me, share with you um, a little bit about the research that I have done um, into what I'm calling the systematic normalization of pedophilia. Uh, the normalization of pedophilia through desensit desensitization using the education system, science, medicine, the political system, the legal system, the church, and pop culture. Um, I'm not going to, I don't know, give a lot of commentary. I just have a, um, a lot of, uh, video clips and articles that I want to share. It's a small portion of what's actually out there, um, which is unfortunate, but, um, uh, this is just a little bit of a wake-up call uh, for some who may not realize really what is out there. So let's get started. Uh, first, I always believe in defining my terms, right? Um, so, what is a pedophile? A pedophile is a person who has sustained, has a sustained sexual orientation toward children generally 13 years or younger, Blanchard says. So Blanchard is a sexologist, adjunct uh, psychi psychiatry professor at the University of Toronto. Uh, that comes off of WebMD. Uh, what is sexual orientation? We're hearing that word a lot thrown around, um, also off of WebMD. Sexual orientation is a term used to refer to a person's emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction to individuals of a particular gender, male or female. Uh, so that is interesting, though, that um, sexual orientation is being applied to pedophiles uh, on WebMD, and yet uh, on that same site, sexual orientation refers to uh, an attraction to a particular gender, not age. So, um, looks like even they don't have their information put together too well. Okay, so um, in our society, uh, in our world, actually, we like to redefine terms. Um, and so, let's look at how we are redefining these terms. Um, I'm going to show you a TED Talk. And uh, I'm showing you a clip from that TED Talk in the um, video description. I will have a link to the full TED Talk, so you'll be able to see that if you'd like to um, see the whole thing. I want to quickly summarize where we are at the moment. According to current research, pedophilia is an unchangeable sexual orientation. Just like, for example, heterosexuality. No one chooses to be a pedophile. No one can see being one. The difference between pedophilia and other sexual orientations is that living out this sexual orientation will end in a disaster. At the moment, we live in a world that already excludes pedophiles because of their preference alone. Someone who is lonely and excluded from society has little to lose and is at much higher risk to commit a crime, like, for example, child sexual abuse. We can make Jonas feel that he stays a valuable member of our society, although he's a pedophile. Right now, most of us feel discomfort when we think about this scenario. And most of us feel discomfort when we think about pedophiles. But just like pedophiles, we are not responsible for our feelings. We do not choose them. But we are responsible for our actions. And we must make a decision. We should accept that pedophiles are people who have not chosen their sexuality and who unlike most of us, will never be able to live it out freely if they want to lead an upright life. We should accept that pedophilia is a sexual preference, a thought, feeling, and not an act. We should differentiate between
between child sexual abuse and pedophilia. We shouldn't increase the suffering of pedophiles by excluding them, by blaming and mocking them. By doing that, we increase their isolation and we increase the chance of child sexual abuse. Only if they make themselves recognizable because they're not afraid of punishment, of anger and rejection. Can we better understand the causes of pedophilia and we can improve their treatment? We can help them accept their sexuality and help them learn to refrain from acting on their sexual urges which cause harm to children. We can encourage them never to commit child sexual abuse we can help them refrain from entering dangerous situations they might not control entirely. And we can prescribe medication. No one is responsible for their feelings, but everyone is responsible for their actions. I thank you very much. Okay, so um, apparently pedophilia is a sexual orientation, a preference, and um, it's our responsibility to make sure that pedof pedophiles are comfortable in their own skin and comfortable with their, um, with their orientation. Um, and to make them feel accepted. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, one way that we are redefining our terms, we're repackaging ourselves, right? That's always one of those things. Reinvent yourself. So, pedophiles, aka minor attracted persons. This past August, a Baltimore conference was sponsored by B4U ACT, a group of pro-pedophile mental health professionals and sympathetic activists. Yep, you read that correctly. Their goal is to eliminate pedophilia from the list of mental illnesses in the Diagno Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the, the DSM, which is scheduled to undergo a significant revision by 2013. This was written in 2011. According to the conference's brochure, the event examined ways in which minor attracted persons, pedophiles, can be involved in the DSM-5 revision process and how the popular perceptions of pedophiles can be reframed to encourage tolerance. So absolutely, it's always a great idea to involve pedophiles in um, uh, when you're reviewing the uh, mental status of pedophiles. So, yeah. All right, um, minor attracted person is an umbrella term for many people with any condition or for people with any condition that means they are sexually attracted to minors. Um, so, I did not know this before, but there it's not just pedophilia. It's actually broken down into uh, various categories. Those attracted to babies and toddlers, those attracted to prepubescent children, those attracted to pubescent children and early adolescents, and then those attracted to late adolescents. Um, you will see later uh, that there's a real push to say that everybody, every man, is attracted to um, late adolescence and that an attraction to prepubescent or early adolescent children is not abnormal. Um, as we redefine our terms, um, 
something that's been in the news lately, or at least not too long ago, I should say, recently, uh, was the Jeffrey Epstein case and um, his infamous uh, jet, the Lolita Express. So what does Lolita mean? Um, you know, what is this thing that he has put on the side of his, that he put on the side of his jet? All right, so Lolita from Merriam-Webster. In some cases, it can be disconcerting. Oh, well, actually, definition of Lolita is a uh, precociously seductive girl. In mm -hmm. some cases, it can be disconcerting when an eponym strays in meaning. In Vladimir Nabokov's 1955 novel Lolita, the character Lolita is a child who is sexually victimized by the book's narrator. Uh, narrator. The word Lolita has, however, strayed from its original referent and has settled into language as a term we define as a precociously seductive girl. So we've gone from this place where Lolita was a sexually victimized uh, girl, a child, to a precociously seductive girl.